Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you, as always, for your tweets. I've got to go to the printer to get them, Shaka. I'm back now. Here, here we go. You're not very quick, you know, I've noticed. Sorry? You're not very fast. <laughs> I had to walk to the printer and back. What do you want me to how do? How slowly was that? The printer's right I've there. got my winter boots on. Oh, <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, Frank and Stevie are with us as well. Uh, Stevie, I just wanted your opinion on something that we were talking about with Frank. Frank was crying over the way in which Depay took the penalty uh, yesterday. Penenka thought it was disrespectful uh, to the goalkeeper. Where, where do you stand on that? Why is it disrespectful? It makes no difference what you do as long as you put the ball in the back of the net. So how you go about it and how it ends up happening makes no difference. Certainly isn't disrespectful to anybody. Frank, you have the right to reply. No, 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 no. I, 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 I thought, you know, uh, Stevie had some feelings for a human being, but I realised <laughs> Just realised that. No. That's what it no. is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK. Um, we, discussed this, we discussed this on the show, didn't we? Aren't Manchester United bigger contenders than Spurs, Chelsea and City now that they don't have to focus on the Champions League, Shaq? Does that make a difference? I, I, I think it does in, in this circumstance, in, in this season. still in the Europa League? Yes. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I think I'd be surprised if Solskjaer doesn't make a lot of changes, especially in the earlier rounds. Because you scored that deep, <coughs> you can make all those changes. Well, if they're contending at the top of the table, still in within very close touching distance, I think they can, yeah. Stevie, blessing in disguise, they're not in the Champions League? Uh, well, yeah, because I think um, I'm with Xhaka. He can, he can make lots of, lots of changes. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm with Xhaka. You know, it's far more important to do well in the league. You can't hang your hat on going all out to win the Europa League. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm with Xhaka. Frank. Always follow the goalie. Good idea. I'm not. I'm not because uh, I think my two colleagues today have no respect for the Europa League. <laughs> I think it's very demanding as well. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all about respect today. I want, it's almost Christmas. I want respect, you know. That's what it is. No, but really, I mean, the, Euro, the Europa League is demanding as well. I mean, you, you, you face good teams as well and you have to travel. You have to run for 90 minutes. Um, it, it's, not, it's not a plus. It would have been out of the competition of any European competition. It would have been a plus. For the uh, for the EPL, but otherwise no, no, they are concerned in midweek, so it's going to be also tiring. They've got Real Social out, chat. You talk about the early rounds; it's a proper test early on. Yeah, but again, I'd be surprised if Social doesn't make changes. Okay, all right. So I'm not going to bang on about it. Uh, Stevie, did you happen to play yeah. against any team that plays like Leeds United do now in your playing days? If yes, what tactics did your manager use for the games against them? No, not at all. Not at all. They're quite unique, aren't they? Not even, not even yeah. close. Yeah, they're, they're completely unique. Yeah, they just go, they just attack. And uh, the second thought is, well, maybe if we lose it, we might have to defend. But let's just go and score. So, no, nobody remotely close. Frank, respectfully, did you play against anyone like Leeds? No, I, I didn't respectfully play against a, a team <laughs> like that. You know, I think it's uh, pl teams teams under Bielsa. Are very unique. I saw Marseille doing like that. I saw the right back, you know, attacking and finishing, defending at the left wing. And I said, what the hell is going on there? You know, <laughs> and after four months, all the other teams understood the way they played and they made them run a little bit everywhere to find, you know, spaces in the middle of it. And it's what's going on right now with Leeds. And on top of it, the players are very are getting very tired, tired, sorry, and uh, not surprised that they can be smashed 6-2 like today. Uh, does Scott McTominay have it in him to become a regular goal-scoring midfielder, Stevie? <laughs> well, if you play against Leeds every week, then yes, but no. No, his, his priority and his main job is to, to be nice and tight and get the ball to the front three. Uh, the fact that it was Leeds uh, meant that there was lots of space and he could get forward. Uh, and that's why you saw him as far forward today as, as you'll probably ever see him for the rest of the season. You you know, Dan, sometimes what I don't like is when I hear, you know, midfielder scoring a goal or defender scoring a goal, you know, or missing a goal. They say, yes, of course, he missed the goal. He's a defender or he's a midfielder. Today, McTominay showed his accuracy on scoring goals, two fantastic goals, where we saw Martial, normally the specialist, missing two easy goals. So 
you know, sometimes journalists should, should, should know what they're talking about. And Maximini <laughs> proved them wrong respectfully. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Take that. Uh, William has played 799 minutes, Shaka. Has he? And he's had one shot on target. Discuss. Uh, what is there to discuss about William? I, I, I'll be honest, when uh, Arsenal signed him, I thought it was a good signing. And I couldn't be more wrong. No. I, I, I think he's been a huge disappointment on, on a number of levels. What he's contributing on the field, in terms of what I thought he'd bring in terms of a winning mentality and experience, it, it's, it's been a, an absolute bust. Stevie, you've been quite critical for him for quite a long time, I feel. Well, he's at an age, always oh, what, 33? He's at an age where you start becoming a little inconsistent uh, just because of the physicality side of it, as much as anything else. And I, th I thought it was a mistake. I, I, if they were going to. Listen, the money they spent on his wages would have been better off going elsewhere because they've got a lot of young players that, that well, have been already. Uh, and some of them, like some Martinelli, who's just going to get fit will probably end up producing more than Villian anyway. So, I mean, it, it's, it looked OK because you're bringing an experienced guy into a lot of young players, but listen, the fact that he's been a complete bust, now they're probably thinking, wow, we should have just, we should have strengthened somewhere else and, uh, and given the kids even more time than they're getting just now. And for all that, we are six months you, you know, in. Dan, if, if so much. Shaka's talking. Be sorry, respectful. Sorry, sorry, Frank. I'm just no. saying. I'm just saying. We, we're six months into. I'm very sorry, <laughs> Mr. Shaka Islam. No disrespect taken, Frank. No disrespect <laughs> taken. But just, just to quickly wrong. say, in, in terms of William, you're six months into a three-year contract. Wow. I mean, it, it, it makes it all the more ridiculous. Not for him. Well, yeah. If you're his, him or his agent, <laughs> happy days. Uh, Frank, you may speak. Yes, thank you very much indeed. You know, I want, just wanted to add that, the, that Chelsea seems to be very, very good at selling players who are completely toasted. You know, they did with Fabregas in Monaco, and since then, you know, we didn't hear about Fabregas anymore. And then uh, Chelsea sold David Luiz last season, during the season, and this season they sold William. They're very good at it. You know, they're very good at it of getting rid of the player, uh, being tossed and I understand. I understand some players, some some teams, sorry, um, hiring those players uh, who, like everybody else, like myself when I was playing at the end of my career, are completely tossed And uh, I don't know. I don't know what Arsenal is doing right now. Did Frank just say Chelsea were good to sell him when he was toasted? I think so. Yeah, that's, that's what I heard. <laughs> uh, this is good. What was the most impressive stadium that you've ever played in, Shaka? Whether it be based on atmosphere or structure? Ooh. Um, go for both if you like. Uh, played in Dortmund. Oh yeah, in for, front of the yellow wall. Uh, well, not in front of the yellow wall. It was, it was a World Cup, so it was a yellow wall of sorts because oh, it, it was right. Sweden. Yes. So it was a yellow wall of sorts, okay. I guess. Um, you have to bring up the Sweden game. Every yes, chance. I did. Yeah, I, did. I, I, I also <laughs> played. I played at the at the Camp No for for uh, Newcastle against Barca, but we were both already out. Of the, it was in the Champions League, of course. Right. We were both already out. And there was 25,000 something like that. So as impressive a stadium as it was. So structurally it was impressive. But a quarter full, it didn't have the kind of atmosphere that, you know, you would think. You know, 25,000 gets lost in there. Stevie, structurally, what was the most impressive stadium that you played in? Uh, structurally, I have to say I was impressed with uh, the... When Bayern used to play at the... What was the name of it? The... Oh, they built, the, the main stadium where they built it for the World Cup. In Germany. What was the name of the stadium? Go to Bayern play I before they moved. Yeah, 74. So, is it the Olympic State? Um, was it the Olympic Stadium? Let's go with that. No, Olympic Stadium is Berlin. I think we should just watch Steve suffer. <laughs> he's, he's getting more red by the minute. I think of the name yet. Well, we can always <laughs> come back to you next week, Steve. Steve's thinking. <laughs> <best. laughs> Write that question Volk back stadium? in. Volk the stadium? Olympia Stadium. No. Uh, can, somebody, can somebody write in and tell me? I'm <laughs> to <look it> <laughs> Answers on a postcard, Steve right. Nicholl. <laughs> yes, is, isn't it the Olympia Stadium, Steve? That could be it, yeah, the Olympic Stadium. Translated, Olympia Stadia is Olympic Stadium, Dan. There you go. <laughs> Well, didn't someone else say the Olympic Stadium? You told them no. So now I had to put a little German twist on it. 
Oh, well, I was thinking. I never heard it. We, we saw you. <laughs> <laughs> that's my thinking face. Uh, that's why we don't see it very often. Uh, Atmosphere-wise, Stevie. <laughs> you can't beat Anfield, ah. seriously. Yeah. Come on. That's, Frank will tell you. What about the Bernabeu when you went there, Stevie? That's quite an impressive stadium. No atmosphere. Aye, but not as not as impressive as the Olympic Stadia. Stevie coaching the MLS All Stars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was a long 90 minutes, I'll tell you. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, Frank? Uh, in terms of structure, I have to say the Stade de France in 98 for the World Cup was absolutely fantastic. And, uh, How'd you get on in that I tournament, I have to Frank? say that it's... <laughs> I, uh, I can't remember. Much, pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> it, was okay. Okay. it was okay. So, so, but yeah, you know, I did what I had to do. <laughs> uh, but in terms of history, Wembley. Wembley, the old stadium, right. was absolutely fantastic mm. because you felt the creation of football, you felt the history of football. And in terms of atmosphere, I think Shaka will be agreeing with me. The 52,000 people at St. James's Park at Newcastle with the shirt uh, black and, uh, and white, it's crazy, mm -hmm. crazy atmosphere. That's very, I'm seeing a different side to Frank today, you know? What sort of it's the humanitarian side. Oh, he's always talking great. about the history of Wembley. Yeah, oh, that's that's right. Right. Whoa, who's Stevie, that? did you like playing at Wembley? You won enough trophies there. Yeah, no, fantastic, but not as, not as good as Anfield. Yeah, I mean, don't, I must have the Bayern I, Munich. I, I would love. <laughs> I'm all, I'll tell you what. I've got another question. Uh -oh. Why? Why when? Why when? When they had the new Wembley, why would they not have done something with the pillars? Mm. I mean, you talk I agree. about you talk about a, a historical and and famous monument with the two pillars at Wembley, and they just knock them yeah, down. The two towers. Some I agree. Stupid. Yeah. I agree. Some stupid cove thing across the top. What a lot of nonsense. Especially how much money they spent on it. That it's was, iconic. Oh, it's what it was. Like grumpy old men they, down they, the pub. They were. They, there, there was a big debate about the keeping the two towers. Yeah. And they didn't, and I was well, absolutely uh, oh. appalled. Yeah, they should have, because it's part of history. Build another stadium. <laughs> I, I agree. Whatever. I agree. Well, well, we all I'm, agree. I'm with the grumpy old men. We all agree. I'm with the two grumpy old men, Frank <laughs> and Steve. Next, break dancing is better than squat. <laughs> 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 Shaka, would you rather debate Stevie on whether Ramos is a world-class defender or give lessons to Don on percentages and probabilities? Goodness me. This is after Don said that Spurs cool. were 50% likely to win the title and then quickly <laughs> he realised what he was saying. Um, I think I have more chance of success with Don. Yeah. I've, I've heard Stevie's <laughs> arguments around Sergio Ramos. And but Don, no, it's hard, I think Don said. I'm just saying, I'm hard, it's hard to Don, argue with Stevie. Give him. I, 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 I did not follow up with saying that Spurs will finish outside the top four, but then he gave them 25% chance of winning that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he said that. that. <laughs> I'm sure he said that. Hey, Stevie, did you see Sergio Ramos' tackle today? World class. <laughs> or did he have to bring a stretcher on for the guy he tackled? <laughs> no, he was brilliant. Didn't get sent off or anything. Crucial in their victory against Avon. Wow. Uh, final, would Stevie wow. like to defend himself against the allegations of not responding to texts or emails in time? Wow. Hey, who said that? I, I don't know who said that. It must have been on a previous show. Oh, somebody yesterday well, on Extra Time. Way. Let me tell you, and Julian are I wrong. do not it, live. I do not live on my. It wasn't phone. me. I mean, I've got, I've got Pete, Pete, the producers. I sat in this chair. And Pete went, "Did you see Mourinho's quotes after the game?" I was like, ah, "What?" He went, "I emailed you." I went, "I don't, I don't sit and check my emails every five minutes of the day, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on my text." <laughs> You're a busy man, aren't you? If you want to speak to me, call me. <laughs> if you want to tell me something, call me. Don't email me. Yeah. Don't text me. I don't. I don't live on my phone. Me, Just call I'm me. I'm talking about anybody. <laughs> Just call me. It's called a. <laughs> see that? It's called a phone for a reason. It's for, it's made for talking to people. <laughs> mm.
Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.